Sometimes your allies really do come from the most unexpected places and that's why it's always important that you have to keep an open mind because you really just never know who's going to bubble up to the surface of being on your team. Maybe something that you might never expect might happen. Well, I bring that up as we look at this book rework. Now, this is an older book. March 9th, 2010, over 11 years old at this point. But Rework for me was one of those initial books that really got me thinking about the possibilities of what could be when you look at the work environment differently, when you think about developing organizations differently. And it all came from what is or maybe was now the cool kid organization at the time, which was Basecamp. Now I spent, before I did my PhD, actually this book came out just as I was starting to dabble in my doctoral coursework. But back in the day, I actually did digital communication for a living. That, that was what I did from the time I graduated college up until about 2012 when I went off and decided to to start my own business and, and, and do something completely different than what I had been doing before. But anyway, in the digital communication space, Basecamp was like the cool kids. Basecamp was where everyone wanted to work. It was like, it's like project management tool. Like there's nothing sexy about project management, but somehow Basecamp was able to make what is typically a really boring process, kind of like sexy and fun and cool. And it was the thing that all of my former, now former friends took so much pride in using. And I have to tell you, I feel like I could hear the collective free, the collective no, last week when Basecamp, of all places, a company that is like what I thought was like the wokest of the woke, announced that they were no longer going to tolerate talk of politics in their office. I was shocked. When I, of all the companies that I never, ever, 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 ever expected to do this, it was Basecamp. Let's, let's take a look at their internal blog post. At Basecamp, we treat our company as a product. It's not a rigid thing that exists. It's a flexible, malleable idea that evolves. We aren't stuck with what we have. We can create what we want. Just as we can improve products through iteration, we iterate on our company too. Recently, we've made some internal changes, which taken in total, collectively feel like a full vision change. It deserves an announcement. In the product world, not all changes are enjoyed by all customers. Some changes are immediately appreciated. Some changes take time to sleep, to steep, settle in, and get acquainted with. And to some, some changes never feel quite right. They may even be deal breakers. The same is true when you're changing company, except the customers are the employees. And when you get to a certain point, customers or employees or both, there's no pleasing everyone. You can't. There are too many unique perspectives, experiences, and individuals. As Huxley offers in The Doors of Perception, we live together, we act on and react to one another, but always and in all circumstances, we are by ourselves. The martyrs go hand in hand into the arena. They are crucified alone. Embraced, the lovers desperately try to fuse their insulated ecstasies into a single self-transcendence in vain. By its very nature, very every embodied spirit is doomed to suffer and enjoy in solitude. And I wanted to read this paragraph specifically because this tells me that Jason Fried knew exactly what he was getting into. He knew exactly what he was doing with this announcement. Let's continue. Heavy, yes, but insightful, absolutely. A relevant reminder. We make individual choices. He's essentially telling his employees, I'm about to tell you something you aren't going to like, and you're going to have to make the choice whether or not to stay here. So you know, I'm going to bet money they were pushed to this by an internal woke culture that was absolutely destroying their productivity. Because this is exactly what politics at work does, at least when it's implemented in how it exists today, which is that one side, which happens to hold the most extreme views, tries to hold everyone else hostage to their perspective. And what it does in organizations is it completely disrupts the organization. It tears down psychological safety, which is the number one attribute of a high, highly performing, highly resilient team. It, it puts, it pits employees against each other. It gives them points for calling each other out. It, it reduces collaboration. It, wor it uh, works a number on employee morale. And overall, it is going to be a destroyer of your productivity. When you eliminate politics at work, it is a bottom 
line business decision. It's not about supporting one side or the other. It's about saying that our job here is to actually do a job and actually show up to work. We all want different somethings. Some slightly different, some substantially. Companies, however, must settle the, co the collective difference, pick a point, and navigate towards somewhere, lest they be get stuck circling nowhere. With that, we wanted to put these directional changes on public record. Historically, we've tried to share as much as we can for us and for you. So this transition continues, the tra this transmission rather, continues the tradition. And we're just really going to focus on number one. No more societal and political discussions on our company Basecamp account. Today's social and political waters are especially choppy. Sensitives are at 11 and every discussion remotely related to politics, advocacy, or society at large quickly spins away from pleasant. You shouldn't have to wonder if staying out of it means you're complicit or wading into it means your target. There are different enough waters to navigate in life, but significantly more so at work. It's become too much. It's a major distraction. It saps our energy and redirects our dialogue towards dark places. It's not healthy. It hasn't served us well. And we've done it with our with it on with it on our company Basecamp account where the work happens. People can take these conversations with willing coworkers to signal WhatsApp or even a personal Basecamp account, but it can't happen where work happens. And then they have an, another blog post where they share more information about this. Now, listen, he's exactly right. Literally, all this is saying is don't talk about politics on the company Basecamp account. You can do whatever you want in your private life with whoever else wants to opt into that conversation, but don't bring politics on your company Basecamp account. We're going to focus on work when we are at work. This is not controversial. This should not be controversial. And this is exactly the right decision. And you know, that again, that he got pushed. Jason Free does not make business decisions unless he is pushed to a place of making them, honestly. Like he actually looks, I do believe this person looks at the big picture. I disagree with him on a lot of things. I don't disagree with him on how he tends to adapt and evolve his company. I actually think he tends to be much ahead of the curve when it comes to things like this. You know that if he's pushed to put this in number one, there was a lot of nonsense going inside a base camp based on talk about politics on their company's account. So he's like, no, we're not doing this anymore. Even if I agree with you, we are not doing this anymore. Let's take a look real quick at this follow-up post from David here, who is also one of the co-authors of that book rework that I talked about at the top. As cliche as it may sound, there are very different times in many places of the world, and in America in particular, we're constantly confronted with terrible tragedies, pulled in polarized political fights, and egged on by social media to engage. There are many places to be involved, exposed, and engaged in these conversations. Basecamp shouldn't be one of those places. Basecamp should be a place where employees can come to work with colleagues of all backgrounds and political convictions without having to deal with heavy political or societal debates unconnected to work. You shouldn't have to wonder if staying out of it means you're complicit or stepping into it means you're a target. This is difficult enough outside of work, but almost impossible at work. By trying to have these debates around such incredibly sensitive societal politics inside the company, you're setting ourselves up for strife with little chance of actually changing anyone's mind. These types of discussions are so difficult that even when we're having them in the best of times together in person with trust batteries fully charged, we struggle. And, we're ha and we have none of these advantages right now, so it's not a surprise the results have been poor. What I tell you, they were experiencing a metric F ton of like lack of productivity and infighting. That's why they did this. We also have to tell ourselves that having these discussions with the whole company is healthy. I used to think that too, but I no longer do. I think it's because ever more stressful, unnerving, and un counterproductive no comment thread on Basecamp is going to close the gap on the fundamental philosophical and political differences, and we're left worse for wear when we try. 
Therefore, we've asked everyone, including Jason and me, to refrain from using our company base camp or hey to discuss societal politics at work effective immediately. This includes everything from sharing political stories in campfire, using message threads to elucidate others on political beliefs that go beyond the topic directly, or performing political advocacy in general. If you're in doubt about whether or not, please ask before posting. And it goes on and on, but listen, basically what this says is don't do this on your company account. You can do it on your private account. We don't care what you do on your private account. Don't do it on the company account, which seems to me to be a really reasonable thing to ask, which of course is why a whole bunch of people at Basecamp started quitting. I've officially resigned my position at Basecamp, says Navid. Uh, Jonas says, given the recent changes at Basecamp, I've decided to leave my job as head of design. I've helped build, design and build all the products since 2011 and recently I've been leading our designs teams too. We'll be looking for something new. DMs open. I've resigned as head of customer support at Basecamp. I'm four months pregnant. So I'm going to take some time off to build this with baby and hang out with a brilliant spouse and child. I have left Basecamp due to the recent changes in policies. I've been doing product design there for seven years. In the last three years, I led the iOS team working alongside other people. Oh, that's not all. After nearly eight years, given the recent changes at Basecamp, I've decided to leave my job as an Android programmer there. I'm leaving my position at Basecamp where I've worked for four years due to the recent changes and new policies. I resigned today from my role of head of marketing at Basecamp due to recent changes and new policies. After seven years, today is my last day at Basecamp. In fact, one third of Basecamp's employees resigned because the CEO said, stop talking about politics at work, do it on your own time, talk about work at work, talk about politics on your own time. One third of them resigned. And I have to say, I think this is brilliant. I think, let, let's stop front. This is going to cause some temporary pain at base camp. Yes, they have, they all of a sudden have one third of their positions open to fill. But the thing of it is, is base camp has a list about 10 miles long of resumes of people who would love to work there and would love to work there so much that they aren't going to act like ungrateful little children and throw up their heads and say, I just can't do it anymore. When they're just asked not to talk about politics at work. Let's read this article. It's from the New York Times. So, you know, you have to take that as a grain of salt. About a third of Basecamp's employees have said they're resigning after the company, which makes productivity software, productivity software. Announced new policies banning workplace conversations about politics. Jason Fried, Basecamp's chief executive, detailed the politics, the policies in a blog post on Monday, calling societal and political discussions on the company's messaging tools a major distraction. He wrote that the company would also ban committees, cut benefits such as fitness allowance, with employees receiving the equivalent cash value, and stop lingering and dwelling on past decisions. Basecamp had 57 employees, including Mr. Freed, when the announcement was made, according to a staff list on its website. Since then, at least 20 of them have posted publicly that they intend to resign or have already resigned, according to a tally by the New York Times. Basecamp did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Mr. Freed and David Hansen, two of Basecamp's founders, have published several books about workplace culture, and news of their latest management philosophy was met with a mixture of applause and criticism on social media. After their newsletter uh, pl platformer discussion published the details, oh my god, I can't speak, you know it's a Monday morning. After the newsletter platformer dis uh, published details of a dispute within the company that contributed to the decision to ban political talk, Mr. Hansen wrote in a blog post that Basecamp had offered severance of up to six months salary who disagree who uh, to any employee who disagree with the founder's choice. Okay. So they had to pay out six months worth of severance, but you know what? That's six months worth of severance. Well paid because the thing of it is, is when you have employees that come in and they try to disrupt the actual goings on in business of the day, one, one employee like this can counteract the good efforts of two people that are actually focused on work. So six months of salary, you know what? That's a price to pay. But these people are insanely disruptive to company culture. They're going to do nothing but focus on their own personal nonsense. And if they're more interested in talking about their personal politics than they are in actually coming to work and doing their flipping job, then they shouldn't have a job there anyway. Basecamp pays... Basecamp pays very, very well. 
Let's just say that. Basecamp pays its employees very, very well. And for so many of them to be so ungrateful of the position that they have, many of whom you saw it in the, you saw it in these tweets, seven years head of marketing. So probably been there for a while, four years there, eight years there. Someone said like 15 years in one of these things, you know, people have been there for a long time. And I think that after a while, when you're in a place that generally actually does do a pretty good, decent job by its employees that, uh, that you make good money and all of a sudden you can talk about whatever you want. All of a sudden they say, you can't bring your politics to work. They're like, Oh, <gasps> clutching our pearls what are we gonna we can't possibly work in an environment where we actually have to do work instead of talking about politics six months of salary is a small price to pay for the damage that people like this could have done we're deeply committed we're committed to a deeply controversial stance mr hansen said some employees are relieved others are infuriated and that pretty well describes much of the public debate around this and then they talk about how Coinbase did a similar thing and they ended up uh, losing about 5% of their staff. So Basecamp lost a little bit more. But listen, I'm telling you, Basecamp is like the wokest of the woke. They're losing 20% of their staff. That is something that is a good thing. That is a positive thing. It, it wipes them out all in one fail swoop. And Basecamp is going to be able to fill those positions. They already know this. These guys are smart. They've written a lot about this. They they have developed their business extremely pragmatically. They knew what was coming. We can tell that they knew what was coming based on how he worded this blog post. They took it all into consideration and they factored it into their decision making. And they decided at the end of the day, better to kiss our woke employees goodbye than to keep them around well worth six months of their salary good riddance to bad rubbish man well done base camp all right guys that's all i've got for this one if you enjoyed this video i hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel hitting that thumbs up button leaving a comment letting me know what you think that's all i've got for right now i'll see you soon